Name a man-made object visible from the moon. I am sure you have the answer already, right? Is it the Burj Khalifa? The Great Pyramids of Giza? Sardar Patel statue? No, not even that. I gave up. The Great Wall of China? Seriously? You think so? I mean, it's definitely a miracle that something that is made in China has lasted this long. But is it visible from the moon? You really think so? Let us see after the intro. First things first, if you like our content, please do share our videos within your friends and family circles. And for those who have not yet subscribed to our channel as yet, please click on the subscribe button. While you're there, please do not forget to click on the bell icon and select all so that you don't miss any of our videos. Everyone would have just one answer when posed with the question about the man-made object visible from the moon. In fact, many would claim that it is the only man-made structure visible from our Roshan Chehra. All throughout our childhood and much beyond, we would have studied these in our school books and would have even written it in exams or got full points in a general knowledge quiz. So what is the truth? If we have to see an object from far, it needs to have two properties. One, it has to be big and the other, its contrast with the rest of the surroundings. Here, I have written the same word on two different surroundings. Are you able to see the difference? Now let us come to the moon and see how these properties are applicable. First, let us take the case of the size. When it comes to visibility in astrophysics, we measure them in terms of angular diameter. Even though many of the celestial objects are at different distances, we perceive them as they are lying in the same plane. That is why the moon and the sun appears to be almost the same size even though they are 4 lakh and 15 crore kilometers away respectively. When we see an object in the sky and if we draw two lines to both its sides, the conical angle between those lines is what is called as angular diameter. The angular diameter of both the sun and the moon are the same, 0.5 degrees or half a degree. That is why they both appear to us as equal in size. Now calculating the angular diameter is not very difficult. For this, we need to know the diameter of the object that we are viewing and the distance from us. Then put this into the equation that the angular size is equals to d by r into 57 degrees. Now let's take a look at the sun. The diameter of the sun is 14 lakh kilometers. The distance from the sun is 15 crore kilometers. Now if we put this into our equation, we get 0.5 degrees. Now if we put the same to our moon, the moon is 3474 kilometers and it is 384,000 kilometers away from the earth. Using the equation, we again get an angular diameter of 0.5 degrees. Now let us see the case of the earth seen from the moon. The diameter of earth is 13,000 kilometers. The distance remains at 384,000. Using the equation, we get an angular diameter of around 2 minutes. That is why we say that the earth is 4 times as big when seen from the moon when compared to what we see the moon from earth. Now let us come to the Great Wall of China. The maximum width of the Great Wall of China is 10 meters. That is, it is one part of 1,30,000 of the diameter of the earth. So just to compare, this is the same as looking at a strand of hair from 3 kilometers away. Now let us come to contrast. Let's look at this picture. This is a photograph taken of a 12 kilometer by 12 kilometer area of China. The Great Wall of China passes through this area. I am sure you would have spotted it, right? This one, correct? Well then, no. This is actually a river in China. This is where the Great Wall of China passes. The problem here is that there is a very little contrast between the Great Wall and the area surrounding it. Now this photograph was taken from an artificial satellite which orbits the Earth from around 
400 kilometers away. From there, you can sometimes see roads through deserts and airport runways and irrigation spots because of their contrast. However, the Great Wall of China loses out here too. We have snapped the pyramids of Giza from space station under favorable conditions. Now the most important question is, if you are not able to spot the wall from 400 kilometers away, what would you see from 3,84,000 kilometers away? Although the Great Wall spans some 7,200 kilometers, it is constructed from materials that make it very difficult to discern from space. Since Neil Armstrong returned from the moon in 1969, he has been repeatedly asked whether he saw it. His answer? He saw continents, lakes and splotches of white on blue. But he could not make out any man-made structures from the lunar surface. I have spent a lot of time looking at the Earth from space, including numerous flights over China, and I never saw the wall, asserts former NASA astronaut Jeffrey Hoffman, who flew on five space shuttle missions from 1985 to 1996. For the Chinese, the wall's visibility from moon has long been a point of pride. When Taikonaut Yang Liwei returned from the Shenzhou 5 mission in 2003 and he admitted to reporters that he had not seen the Great Wall, online forums exploded with disappointment. Misinformation about the barrier's visibility dates back decades. A 1932 reprise, believe it or not, cartoon claimed that the wall is the mightiest work of man, the only one that would be visible to the human eye from the moon. But the man accounted for as most responsible to spread this myth was an American adventurer named Richard Halliburton. He was very famous in America and the rest of the world due to his various adventurous travels. In one of his books titled The Second Book of Marvels, Halliburton wrote, Astronomers say that the Great Wall is the only man-made thing on our planet visible to the human eye from the moon. Quote, unquote. The crucial thing here is that Richard Halliburton is supposed to have died in 1939. That is. 30 years before man actually landed on the moon. But do not think that he was just a fraud. He was very well known for his adventure and his style of writing which captivated many hearts. He has done many adventures including swimming across the Panama Canal, climbing Matterhorn and Mount Fuji, attempting to enter Mecca which is forbidden to non-Muslims and finally hiding from gatekeepers on the grounds of the Taj Mahal to experience in solitude the sunset as well as to swim under the moonlight in the pool facing the Taj Mahal. His end was also dramatic. He was conducting a sea voyage in a small ship across the mighty Pacific Ocean from Hong Kong to San Francisco but was never to be seen again. But by the time he had created enough awe for people to believe whatever he said. Well, why did we make this episode? It is to show how urban legends can easily begin and get carried across generations and generations and make people believe in all kinds of incorrect knowledge. Just because someone famous has made a statement doesn't mean that you need to believe it. Always, always look for evidence. If you are a follower of science, and you have some scientific temper in you, be a skeptic. Do not believe in any old fairy tale which does not have any evidence and something which has not been proved by the scientific method. All our videos that we have made so far and the ones that we would continue to make would be around this concept where we would look at things skeptically and try and unearth the actual truth out for you. Until next time, this is Anand. Signing off for Pale Blue Thoughts.